Well, if you haven't noticed, pink everywhere. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October. And it's nice to hear a good story because, as we all know, cancer doesn't always have a good ending. In this case, it didn't have a good ending for two families, but it did have a good ending for a friendship. From high school to reconnecting later in life because of one common situation, I want to introduce these two amazing women who have taken their lemons and turned it into lemonade. Ashley, Ashley, tell us where you're from. Southampton. You know, and Melissa, where are you from? Allentown, New Jersey. Okay, and how, tell us like how you two originally met. Um, We've known each other since high school. I did a fundraiser for child abuse awareness. We did a teddy bear drive and Ashley was one of the first people to uh, jump on board and help me run the, the group and the fundraising. And then we were connected through Future Business Leaders of America, a group that we were in, and we spearheaded another uh, fundraising event for that organization. Um, We did a walk. That was our first walk together, and we did that. Uh, So we put a team together, and we sold bagels every Friday and raised money and sold the little pumpkins every Friday with them, too. And we carried the torch and did that. And then when I graduated, Ashley kept going. Nice. So, um... Okay, so Ashley, you kept carrying the torch because you guys are not, you're not in the same grade, right? No, we are, we were two years apart. Um, Mr. graduated two years before I did. Um, so after she graduated, then I went on to be Business Leader of America, and then I just started doing more and more fundraising after that, and then what I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because as the story goes on, you'll understand why she said that. Um, now... Melissa, since you spearheaded fundraising again later in life, um, that's not the fun story, but tell us what happened. Um, In 2010, my sister-in-law, six months after my niece was born, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, She was kind of a modest person. She was very private. She didn't like to share too much, Uh, but a lot of people knew what was going on. And with a six-month-old and a a three-year-old, people wanted to help, but they also didn't want to intrude. So I did what I came naturally to me was put something together. So by starting a team, by starting Amy's Angels, it was a way for family and friends to show their support to her without intruding too much on her. Um, And we ended up um, of runners, walkers. And at that time, Amy went to the first race with us and she got to experience a very moving day for all of us because it was so new. She just had started treatment at that point. Just ran with it and I, I promised her that every year I would be involved in it and I wouldn't, you know, no matter what the outcome was. So. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, because unfortunately she has passed and um, you continue to raise a really lot of money, which is great. And then, of course, Ashley, your story. Uh, mine kind of, I guess, with uh, getting done with high school, my sister was diagnosed just as I graduated high school. Um, I was 18. And she was 25. So at that time, we kind of didn't really take it seriously because she did have a lump. 25-year-old, you know, has breast cancer when you're that young. Not too many. Um, but then turns out she had seven different types of breast cancer, which I also didn't know that there was different types of breast cancer. Uh, that totally blew my mind. And going to it further, none of them were genetic. M- uh, mind-blowing thing after another because how does that even happen to a 25-year-old if it's not hereditary. We were new to the whole breast cancer thing. Nobody else that we knew had it. Got involved with the breast cancer walk in Philly on Mother's Day, so we had always done that with her. She had a good period in between where she was cancer-free. It was like everywhere in her system, everywhere, um, passing from liver failure, but ultimately from the breast cancer. So this too, we switched over. She was re-diagnosed, connected on Facebook. Um, so before, okay, so you guys have not seen each other since high school, right? We always meet up race day. Yeah. So okay, race day. But yeah. before, before we connected for Komen, uh, we really hadn't seen each other right. for years. We did connect before the race on Facebook. Acquaintances, mm-hmm. I guess you could say, reacquainted. And so this has brought you two together like besties, right? <laughs> Since 2012 was the first year that um, she asked me on Facebook doing the Central South Jersey walk. I said I didn't even know about it because we'd always done the Philly one. Wow, that's really great to know that um, the money that's raised from this effort, because there's a lot of money raised, actually stays in the Central and South Jersey region.
region. Well, listen, if you have a similar story, which I'm sure many of you do listening, um, Co- Susan G. Komen, Race for the Cure, uh, Central and South Jersey, but of course anyone can participate, is November 6th, uh, 2016 at Six Flags Great Adventure. If you want more information, it's simple. Just visit um, Komen.org. And, you know, Google the Coleman Central and South Jersey Race for the Cure. You'll find information on how to register. It's at Six Flags Great Adventure. It's a really great, fun day. Um, you can dress in pink. You can come normal. But it's a way to support a friend, a loved one, um, anyone who you know that has suffered from breast cancer. Maybe you're a survivor. This is a great opportunity for you. And um, thanks for everything you do, girls. And 